With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft. With the 92nd pick. With the 205th pick. 135th pick. With the 53rd pick. With the 109th pick. 100th pick. And with the 215th pick. The Tennessee Titans select. Can't wait to get you here. Coming up on Titans All Access. It's been a busy offseason. From free agency to the 2021 NFL Draft, Tennessee has reshaped its roster. You know, it's a dream come true. First round draft pick Caleb Barley walks around the field with Mike Keith. Tennessee, man, has always been my, my favorite team. Amy Wells finds out why linebacker Bud Dupree wanted to don the two-tone blue. General Manager John Robinson joins us to talk all things Titans offseason. You love uniform questions, don't you? You love them. Head coach Mike Vrabel answers questions from Titans Nation. And one of the newest Titans isn't new to the Titans. All this and so much more coming up on Titans All Access. The monster, Derrick Henry. Sack! Rashawn Evans, A.J. Brown to the house. Brian Tannehill taking him to school. You see it right there. It's Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith, and we're back. We're back. We're back <laughs> to introduce you to the 2021 Tennessee Titans for the first time. Lots of stuff has happened in this offseason, and as you just heard, we're going to have a lot of things to show you and tell you during the course of this program to get you up to speed. But the first thing I think is – Probably ought to run through the draft picks, right? Yeah, we should probably introduce people to the newest Tennessee Titans. Okay, so just to make sure you're up to speed, here we go. Let's start in the first round with Virginia Tech defensive back Caleb Farley. The second pick for the Tennessee Titans, Dylan Radins, who is an offensive tackle out of North Dakota State. Two third round picks. We begin with the man taken at number 92 out of the University of Georgia, Monty Rice. And then there's Elijah Molden, the defensive back out of Washington. In the fourth round, the Tennessee Titans traded up to take Louisville wide receiver Des Fitzpatrick. And they also took Rashad Weaver, an outside linebacker from Pitt. First of two sixth round picks, Titans go to Louisiana State University for wide out Racy McMath. And the Titans wrap up the draft with a safety out of Oregon, Brady Breeze. Eight total draft picks. The Titans got high draft grades everywhere. And a big part of the reason for that, the first round pick, Caleb Farley. Absolutely. And Mike had a chance to talk to the Titans first round pick. Let's go around the field with Caleb Farley. The Tennessee Titans select Caleb Farley, defensive back, Virginia Tech. Oh, there you go. Welcome to Nissan Stadium. Can you describe what it's like to be in what is your new home? Man, it's just extremely emotional. You know, I think it's, it's right there. Just as emotional as draft night was. Uh, coming out here and, and seeing the, the graphic and smelling the grass, it's just, it's just getting me anxious to play football. What does it mean just being on a football field to Caleb Farley? That means everything to me. You know, that's, that's been my life since I was six years old. That's what I love to do. I genuinely have a deep passion for it. I want to play for 25 years. Is it true that you really told your mom when you were seven years old that you would be an NFL first round pick? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's always been my dream. It's always been my goal. In 2017, first day of practice, you tear up your knee. Non-contact, no pads, the whole thing. Your mom gets sick again you lose her, all that happens in five months. Was there a period in there where you thought this dream that I have might go away? A part of my dream did go away, you know, during that. I never once thought about quitting or, or, or giving up my dreams of playing in the NFL, but my dream was to have my mom in the stands. My dream was to take a ball to her, but I'm still grateful because I have my father. So it just brought us even closer together and it gave me a whole different perspective on life and on how to value and cherish each and every moment with your loved ones. There's some moms who are boy moms and they get what it's like to be a boy mom. They love ball and they love cooking for you and they love spending time with you. Was she a typical boy mom? My mother was a typical boy mom and I was a typical mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> As you're here now and you think about the whole journey, 
the good, the bad, and the in-between. And you're looking at this beautiful place with your name on the Jumbotron. Welcome to Tennessee, Caleb Farley. How do you sort of pull it all together? You know, it's a dream come true. I, I have everything that I could ever ask for and a team to, you know, help me have success. Just meeting the coaching staff and talking with the training staff and, and, and the hospitality that everybody's shown. It's so much more than I could have dreamed about. Even though I dreamed about it so big, it's so much more. And it just feels so good to be a part of something bigger than yourself. And I'm just so, so excited to be a part of this organization and this team. Concentrate on coming in and being a great teammate. We're excited to have you. Oh, I appreciate, appreciate it, Chris. Okay, so you've got the NFL ball, but I got to get you to do something else. Okay. That is a football that I have gotten every Titans first round pick to sign. Oh, wow. And so from Maiden High School, all the dreams, you now get to join the list. That's such an honor. How about right below your defensive teammate, Rashawn Evans? Caleb Farley, welcome to the Tennessee Titans. Thank you. It's time to party. We are live here. This year's virtual draft party presented by Gibson featured analysis from Titans Radio. Performances by Mitchell Tenpenny and Moon Taxi. And a Titans alumni roundtable with running backs Eddie George, Chris Johnson, and defensive end Javon Curse. A select number of season ticket members watched the party live from the Gibson Garage and Virgin Hotel on Thursday, April 29th. This is Hunter from Richmond, Virginia. He says, Coach, what are you the most excited about for this upcoming season? Same thing I am always. It's trying to build a team and build a build guys with new faces. And, um, every year is different. Just getting excited to work with the players. You know, I never got into coaching to hang out with other coaches. I got into coaching to, to help players and improve players and win. Glad to have you back with us in the Bet MGM studio. And glad to have back with us in the Bet MGM studio. Titans general manager John Robinson. It's good to see you here again. Uh, it's good to be back live and in person, Mike. All right. I want to talk about Caleb Farley, who we've already met in this edition of Titans All Access. What separated Caleb Farley, not just from the other cornerbacks, but from the other players so that you decided to take him in the first round? He had outstanding size, uh, speed, athleticism. He was a pretty guy to, to evaluate on, on film with the production that he had. And then the more that we talked to the staff and the coaches, you know, that had kind of touched him along the way there in his career at Virginia Tech. Just an outstanding guy that was committed to the team effort. Smart football player with a tireless work ethic. Elijah Molden is another guy that you drafted. What makes him unique? What is he going to contribute to the secondary? He's a versatile player. You know, he can, he can play safety. He can play outside corner. He's played nickel. He's tough. He's dependable. He's extremely smart. One of our more impressive interviews, he had watched three or four games of our defensive film from this past season. And he commented about how he liked um, the way we used our nickel with blitzes, with coverage concepts. Let's talk about receivers. And I want to start in free agency. You signed Josh Reynolds away from the Rams. What'd you like about Josh Reynolds? Outstanding size, um, competitive player. He's got this sneaky speed to him. Because he's such a longer, taller player, you don't think he's moving, but then he's pulling past defensive backs. He can play inside, he can play outside. Really big catch radius for red zone opportunities. And, and he's not afraid to go in there and dig out, a, you know, dig out a linebacker or a safety in the run game as a blocker. You drafted two wideouts, Racy McMath and Des Fitzpatrick. Other than the obvious wide receiver traits that they have, was their size part of what set them apart? Yeah, both of those guys had outstanding size and, and speed. You know, Racy timed really, really fast. Both of those guys, the one thing that set those guys apart was their competitiveness, their toughness, both as blockers, um, both with the ball in their hands after the catch, and Racy on special teams. You know, he, he was a demon in the kicking game for Coach Ogeron down at LSU. You drafted in the second round an offensive lineman out of North Dakota State by the name of Dylan Radens. Could have drafted a lot of linemen. What set Dylan Radens apart? Really his size, his athleticism, his length, uh, his makeup, his traits. Extremely competitive. Um, had a great week down at the Senior Bowl. Uh, you could see it in the practices, you could see it in the game. He was one of our interview guys down there in, in, in Mobile and was just an impressive guy to talk to. 
He's about what we're about, you know, with the offensive line and how they play stylistically, and, and a really good fit, and a guy that we think can really plug in at any four spots. Amy is going to visit with Bud Dupree later in this edition of Titans All Access. And what I want to know is, as you were going through free agency looking for an edge rusher, what led you to Bud Dupree? Well, I think he impacts the game, you know, at the end of the line of scrimmage. You know, whether it's the run game or the passing game. Pittsburgh moved him around a little bit and, and kind of played, you know, that joker position or buck position where, you know, he might line up on the guard, he might line up and he rushes and he blitzes or he drops. Danico Autry is a player that we're very familiar with from his time with the Raiders and the Colts. He's listed as a defensive lineman, but is his versatility what makes him so appealing? Yeah, I'm glad we don't got to block him. We're playing with him rather than against him. But, you know, he's a guy, again, that, that you know, he's, he lines up over, over the guard. I mean, heck, he played some nose tackle for Indy sometimes. Uh, you could stand him up. You can play him over the tackle. A really tough, physical, aggressive uh, style to his play. And a guy that, again, adds some versatility to the mix with that front force. John Robinson, it has been an exciting offseason so far. Thanks for sharing the details to this point. We look forward to visiting with you again. Thanks for having me in. More Titans All Access coming your way after this. On Saturday, March 20th, the Tennessee Titans partnered with Mayor John Cooper and the Metro Health Department to host a COVID-19 mass vaccination event at Nissan Stadium. The event distributed 10,000 doses of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. One of the things we pride ourselves on is that we want to be committed to serve this community, not just when we're entertaining fans on game day. And some of the events that we've been able to host and sort of the projects we've been able to be a part of, are really consistent with that. You're in the Bet MGM studio with Titans All Access. This is Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. Glad to have you rejoining us as we talk about a lot of the off-season excitement with the Tennessee Titans. And one piece of off-season excitement news came really at the end of 2020 when the Tennessee Titans announced that Nissan Stadium is going to get a facelift in the years to come. As a matter of fact, it's going to be remade, refreshed, reimagined, going to be really special moving forward. But it's not just Nissan Stadium. It's the entire East Bank. And Mike, you had a chance to sit down with some of the Titans brass to talk about this big project in the Titans huddle. Check this out. Gil Beverly, you have seen fan surveys. Absolutely. You have been involved with the focus groups. As you've heard this talk over the last four months, what are you hearing from the fans? Well, one's just a great sense of excitement. People love Nissan Stadium. They love the Titans and the opportunity for an upgrade and see the evolution and for us to take everything to a new level, I think have people you know, really fired up. But in terms of what people are looking for, I think there are you know, really three themes that emerged. Um, one is social. You know, it used to be in the old days that you went to a game, you kind of filed into your seat, and you just sat there and you just watched. And, you know, the way stadiums have evolved now, people want to be able to hang out a little bit more. Maybe I want to talk to a buddy who's at a different part of the stadium, and I want to meet with them somewhere else and, and hang out for a little bit. Or I want to be able to move around and, and talk to different people instead of just sitting next to one person. The second thing is food. Everyone loves food, right? So there's a desire to get more elevated food experiences in the building and to get more authentic Nashville. And then last but not least is entertainment. We vision Nissan Stadium as the biggest stage in Nashville. So how do we put music all throughout the building? How do we create spaces for other types of shows? What does campus development mean in your mind? And what do the Titans kind of envision behind the campus development of Nissan Stadium? We need to start by defining the real estate we're, we're talking about. So the, uh, the city has long referred to uh, the, the area where the stadium sits as the East Bank. The East Bank is generally the area between the Cumberland River and the highway that separates downtown from East Nashville and Edgefield and, and Casey. And, and our stadium sits in the kind of center of that, of that area. And for a long time, the city has envisioned that, that this area, the East Bank, which is largely industrial, would become something bigger, more dynamic. Through multiple mayoral administrations, we, we've been listening to, to city planners about what they would like to see happening on the East Bank and, and participating in that longer term, bigger vision. What types of buildings would be appropriate and what type of layout would be appropriate to inspire people to, to have this be a, a vibrant community to, to live, work and play? We think, based on all of our discussions, that this area can be a fabulous place that will enhance the reputation of our city, will enhance the reputation of Tennessee, 
Uh, and we want to be a part of that. We want to help to bring that vision to life. For more details about what's going on with the Nissan Stadium refurbishment and the development of the East Bank, make sure and visit TennesseeTitans.com. Around the band, Amy Wells sits down with free agent outside linebacker Bud Dupree, one of the newest Titans. That's next on Titans All Access. But first, Mike Vrabel has another question and answer. This one's from Kenston in Memphis, Tennessee. He asks, what is the best way for players to rest up and heal during the offseason? Well, some guys take longer than, than others. Some guys have procedures after the season. Some guys have, have some lingering issues that they need to, to continue to rehab. Uh, some guys are, are probably a little fresher than others based on age. And, and I think that's all part of the building a routine. It's so important for us to be a part of the community. On April 3rd, the Tennessee Titans partnered with Hands On Nashville to assist with flood relief efforts. We actually built a partnership a year ago during the tornado when the Titans came in and said, we want to help. And we said, great, we can put you to work. Several Titans employees helped clean up an area near Souter Drive in Nashville. When our residents in the community are hurting and need help, it is our responsibility to go out and be a part of that. The Tennessee Titans thrilled their fans when it was announced early in free agency that they had agreed to terms with coveted outside linebacker Bud Dupree. There's not much the University of Kentucky grad can't do on the football field. And in talking to our Amy Wells, you see that his passion is the biggest reason that his motor never stops. You grew up in Georgia, you played at Kentucky, now here you are in Tennessee. How does it feel to be back? Man, you know, it feels great to be back in the South. It seems like a pipeline I had here, you know, high school ball, college ball, now I'm back in the Titans. So, man, it's, uh, it's always been a dream for me to play for the Titans, actually. Even though growing up, my favorite team you know, was the Falcons, just being in Georgia, man. But Tennessee, man, has always been my, you know, my, my, favorite, my favorite team other than that, man, you know, Eddie George, Man, the late McNair, man, a lot of those, the, the OG guys. This is a blessing to be able to just play for play for this organization. Now, what is it about this Titans defense right now that really appeals to you? You know, the DBs, man, the DBs are, are tremendous. You know, they're doing a great job, man. You know, the inside linebackers is just, I can go on and on about the defense, man, that, that they're making plays, you know. Up front, the big guys, they have it, three techniques and stuff, too. Also, Landry, he does a great job, too, man. There's a lot of moving pieces on this defense, and, uh, you know, they're coming together tremendously as we've seen over the last couple of years. Seeing the growth of this organization and seeing in the, in the direction they're going, I mean, you couldn't be more excited for the program. One of your future teammates is Jeffrey Simmons, someone that you've worked out with a little bit. Knowing his style of play, knowing your own style of play, how do you feel like you guys are going to fit together on the football field? Yeah, definitely. I can't wait to get clear so we can go back and start back grinding all season together, along with the other guys, man, so we can really get a feel. Now that we know we're on the same team, we can really work together despite of just uh, I'm working at the same place you're working at let's get some work in nah it's a bigger goal now we're in the off season together as a whole you know that's the fun part about it being able to be in that in those type of environments with your teammates you know putting the pressure on each other man let's get better let's do this let's let's do this extra man let's make sure we're let's make sure we're connecting the dots as a unit yeah it'll all be fun now, you mentioned getting cleared. Your 2020 season was cut a little short due to injury, but in the 11 games that you played, you were able to get eight sacks. That's a lot of sacks for 11 games. Tell me the uh, Bud Dupree key to getting a sack. Man, you know, I'm a speed rush guy, man. I think a lot of times people on the speed, you know, uh, when you overset speed, you'll be able to turn it into power. And I'm a big guy, so I like to do power moves as well. And, you know, when it's crunch time, you got to be able to put your pin your ears back and be able to get to the quarterback, man. It doesn't matter how you get to the quarterback, which way, just make sure you get there. Bud Dupree, he's going to wear number 48 for the Titans, just like he did in Pittsburgh. When we come back, you'll meet one of the newest Titans whose first ever professional football game was at Nissan Stadium, and it was a memorable one. Stay tuned to meet Monty Rice. That's next. This one is from Ashton in Nova Scotia. He says, Coach, what is one thing that you wish you had known when you began your career as a head coach? You know, I don't really know. I mean, I think that there's going to be just a lot of things that you're going to have to deal with every day, and you're going to have to keep your knees bent, keep your head on a swivel. You know, it's such a long season. It's such a long process. Stick with the plan. Stick in what, with what you believe in and, and make the players believe in it. They didn't leave a, a, a manual underneath the desk. and You kind of just have to 
to do the things that you feel like are best for the football team. We love it when we start to have players who join the Tennessee Titans who actually grew up Titans fans. And that happened in this draft class. It did. And, Mike, nothing makes me more emotional when Titans fans become Titans. But Monty Rice was a Titans fan. Yeah, we have a lot of fans in the Huntsville, Alabama area. Shout out to North Alabama. We love you down there. Monty Rice grew up in the Huntsville area and had a chance to attend his first Titans game nearly 12 years ago. Crazy. Crazy stuff. As you look at the pictures of him in his Titans garb, Let's remember the first game that he ever attended, which was actually on November 29th, 2009. I contend it might be the best game ever played at Nissan Stadium. Tell me why. They're playing the Arizona Cardinals, the Tennessee Titans are. They're behind late in the game. They get the ball back at their own one yard line. They don't need a field goal. They need a touchdown. And the Titans miraculously drive 99 yards with a series of bizarre plays to get down the field and score to win. They actually do it on the last play of the game. Ironically, two first round picks, Vince Young to Kenny Britt for the game winner with no time remaining. And you think about that. If you're Monty Rice and that's the first pro game you ever see, you're going to be a fan your whole life. Yeah, that, that'll get you hooked. That'll get you hooked on NFL football. And so cool to now have him be a part of this organization and play his first NFL game in the same place that he saw his first NFL game. Monty Rice, one of the newest Titans, and we're excited for him and excited about what all is happening in this offseason. We've got a lot more coming up over the next few months. Our next edition of Titans All Access will be a training camp preview. Stay tuned and check your local listings for when that will be on in your area. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.